In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Church in Wellington Square in Minehead. I'm Father Simon Robinson, the parish priest here. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you are very welcome to this service of Eucharist. We say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As is our tradition here during Lent, we hear the commandments which God has given to his people and examine our hearts. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honour your father and mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not cover anything that belongs to your neighbour. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. And Amen. write all these your laws in our hearts. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We hear the word of God. The reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. 
Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verses from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Do not let me put, be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him in, out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. May I speak in the name of God, whose Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As I uh, read and listened to all four of today's readings, I was struck by two key images, the image of clouds and that of the path, of walking along a path. And there are references to both of these images in the appointed readings for today. And I do encourage you to read them and spend some time thinking about them. During this past year, one of the lifelines for me has been the sky, looking upwards at different times of the day. And frequently we are blessed with stunning sunrises and amazing sunsets. The sky here in Minehead always feels very high and the cloud formations are often extraordinary, particularly if they are reflecting the morning or the evening sunshine. This looking above and looking into the sky, beyond myself, who I am, what I do and our current situation, has given me many moments of comfort, moments to breathe deeply and moments of knowing that in the end everything will be okay, all shall be well. And as we begin Lent, I think we need to remind ourselves that everything in the end will be okay, all shall be well. And this surely is what we talk about when we talk about hope, Christian hope, the drawing back of the veil, the opening of the temple curtain to catch a glimpse of the path that leads us home to the place of eternal glory, a beatific vision of heaven. Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Mark and Mark has a rigour and a pace about it that is both compelling and disturbing. In today's short Gospel reading we move from the baptism of Jesus to his temptation in the wilderness by Satan and then to the beginning of his ministry in a matter of some five verses. We hear three short passages within one passage that reveal Jesus as the Son of God to us. But not just any son, a beloved son. And that word beloved is of great importance. It's a word that indicates intimacy, the intimacy of a doting father upon a beloved child. And again, at a time of enforced separation from our loved ones and the constant lack of human contact and indeed human intimacy, 
perhaps this uh, very difficult lens is one that we need to look through and be encouraged to seek God the Father, God our Father, who loves Jesus intimately and who loves us all intimately. The Gospel reading begins with the prophet Isaiah, with John as baptizer and moves swiftly to Jesus. We're not comforted by the story of the Christ child's birth as we are in Matthew and Luke. No, Mark goes straight for the jugular. Jesus, the Son of God, comes as judge and as redeemer. Jesus comes to confront human sinfulness and Mark leaves us under no illusion as to the purposes of God in his Son. Repent and believe in the good news. It's a hard-hitting message and one that we cannot hide from. It's a message that we hear during Lent in the very many readings and the hymnody that we would normally be singing time and time again. Repent and believe. Repent and believe in the good news. However, I was, uh, uh, when I was preparing this sermon, I found myself wondering how many of us during Lent get stuck at the word repent and forget that we repent on this journey, on this pathway into the good news that Christ died for us in order that we might have life. And this paradox is the greatest paradox of all. Jesus died willingly that we might live and that we might know the love of God. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. How many of us can even begin to accept that God might love us and is pleased with us when our lives are racked with self-doubt about who and what we are? Could we, perhaps, during Lent this year, look up into the skies, in prayer, in silence, and with real motivation, listen for the voice of God. Might we just be able to begin to believe that we are loved, that we are beloved? And what of the imagery of the path? There are very many beautiful paths around our hometown. And I try to include photographs in these online services of such places and of the many walks I've been on to remind us all of the gifts of creation that God has graced us with here. We've all been on a tortuous path this year with very many difficult twists and turns. Lent is a path, a path that is challenging spiritually if we engage properly with it. Life is a path, a journey. Being a Christian is a pilgrim journey upon a pilgrim path, a pilgrim journey that leads us home. And this journey, this pilgrim journey, is on the path, the path that leads us to the light, the light of Christ, as will be proclaimed aloud and afresh at Easter. Lenten repentance is an acknowledgement that we're going to turn not just our heads, not just our hearts, but also our feet from one path to the best path that we can travel on. It is the path on which we can place both feet, all of ourselves, knowing that we are beloved. Whatever it is that you're carrying in your heart today, whatever it is that you might be trying to hide from God, Whatever it is that you dare not acknowledge, why not look up into the sky and listen out for the voice of God? God already knows what is on your heart. Bring your head, your heart and turn your feet to Jesus Christ again and again this Lent. 
walk towards God. For God is waiting patiently, compassionately and lovingly for you and for me. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we pray to God, our Father. To the bidding Lord of compassion, we say, in your mercy, hear us. Lord of compassion, in, in your mercy, hear us. Gracious God, we come to you in thankfulness for the church, for our local churches, for the national church and the church universal. We ask your immense blessing upon those who lead, our archbishops Justin and Stephen, our own bishops Peter and Ruth, and the priests and people of the Deanery of Exmoor. Through your Spirit, renew us, give us courage in the ways that we witness to the Gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for the nations of the world, that those who lead be graced with wisdom and discernment. We pray for peace, for a fair share of the earth's resources, for an end to poverty, for an end to hunger and corrupt dictatorships. We pray for our own government as they seek to create a safe route out of lockdown restrictions. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Loving Lord, we pray for this, our hometown of Minehead. We ask your blessing upon all those who work in schools and education as they prepare to return to school, albeit online. We pray for parents working with teachers in educating their children at home. And we pray for good mental health for all children. Lord of compassion, 
in your mercy hear us. Gracious God, we hold up to your throne those that we know and are praying for, who are sick in body or mind or spirit, those struggling with life, those who feel lonely and alone, those who live with anxiety and depression, those who struggle with addiction. We pray for the NHS, for those working in intensive care, for all hospital chaplains. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. And finally, Lord God, we pray for the dead. Those who have died recently, particularly from COVID. And we pray for those who this day will die as a result of violence or poverty, those driven to suicide, and those who will die all alone. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. And in a short moment of silence, we hold up to you, Lord God, our own personal prayers and petitions. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come to that moment where we share the peace one with another. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. In whatever way we can, we share the peace one with another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest who has loosed us from our sins and has made us to be a royal priesthood to you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, 
the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of, the, out of your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. 
refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please do join us again next week when our service of Parish Eucharist will be coming from St Michael's Parish Church on North Hill in Minehead. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and pray and care for, this day and always. Amen. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. The Eucharist has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of